Don't worry about it. My name is Eric D. Jones. I was on the right side of the right here in the city of the county. Stand the same thing. They, it's early. Excuse <coughs> me. It's early uh, Friday morning, uh, November 29th. 2019 the time 3.07 a.m. First thing thank all my family my support when you continue to encourage support I'm continue to keep myself employed right in the middle of the here I'm continue to uh, further my education more work out on I continue to pursue my surgery degree instead of being menstruated contrary to market to the break and going to school but then being in the future I will be going back to more work out on I to continue to pursue my surgery degree instead of being menstruated contrary to mark uh, <coughs> You know, back in January of uh, 2019, uh, I had enrolled at this, this school right here in the Memphis Tri-State area called Health and Institute of Memphis in the medical system program. The reason why I did that, it was a nine-month program. I, and, uh, uh, I graduated from school and, uh, and uh, got a certification in uh, medical system and I'm uh, trying to get three other certifications from the bottom of the technician, uh, EKG technician, and uh, 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 health records specialist. But uh, back in 2009, 2010, I was a student at Remington College, uh, right here in the Memphis Tri State here <coughs> in the Malcolm Bennett Cohen uh, class. And so uh, I graduated with a diploma, but I didn't receive a uh, certification in that, in that, in that, uh, in that uh, career field. And so, like I said, I uh, got this. You know, uh, at the certification in, in, in the medical assistance so I'm in the process of uh, you know uh, continue to uh, uh, prepare myself you know, to, uh, for employment in the healthcare field now I'm going I'm, I'm to uh, move on As you know, yesterday, uh, here in the United States of America, was Thanksgiving. And so uh, I'm saying, hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. And for everybody, you know, we all should have something to be thankful for. Thankful for, for the, uh, God bless us with, you know, the, uh, to still be in, in, in here living and to, to praise Him and, and uh, to and thank God. <clears throat> now since uh, I, uh, I had the day off uh, for Thanksgiving Day and then I wasn't so sure uh, last week when I did my video that I was going to have the day off on Black Friday, which is, you know, Friday, but I do. Uh, I, so I was fortunate enough to have Thanksgiving Day off, as well as Friday, then work Saturday, then fortunate enough to be off on Sunday, so, you know.
So um, <clears throat> like I say, I'm, I'm um, having uh, Thanksgiving day off. Then I have today, which is Friday, I have a day off. Then I work Saturday, then be off Sunday. So. Really, I ain't too much worried about the time. You know, I'm gonna do what I can. I'm still gonna do what I'm doing, but uh. Like I've been saying over and over, uh, there ain't no such thing as no blood gang, no crib gang in Chicago, or no, no such thing. And talking about some bloodstone and limestone. That's that East Coast bitch. East Coast bitch. See, when it got that bloodhound, that bloodhound, that bloodhound pick up your scent. I know, I know what, I know again. You thought you were gonna be able to hide. I know it yet. The bloodhound pounds. See, you can't you ain't gonna hide from that bloodhound. That bloodhound gonna find you. That bloodhound gonna find you. And pick your scent up. And then when, it, when the bloodhound pick up your scent, see, when you call yourself gonna try to run. Then the mother hound, them harriers, and them uh, fox hound, they'll chase you all day, all night. But I found you. Ain't no such thing. No East Coast bitch being in Chicago or no, ain't no such thing. Or nowhere in the Illinois, in the state of Illinois, or nowhere in the surrounding state. Ain't no such thing. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna accept. Now I'm prove not gonna allow. No East Coast bitch. Then you know I, you know, it thought that came to my mind. You know I'm still. Uh, what is this Jesse Jackson doing in Chicago? There's no such thing as a Baptist church. You know, no, there's no such thing as being a Christian. See, that's what I've been going over and over and over. Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed apostle Paul, a lying, murdering devil. There's no such thing. There's no Baptist church. No such thing being no Christian. What you doing in Chicago? See, you be lying. There's no such thing as a Catholic church in all the particular churches. There's no such thing as a Protestant because a Protestant is a Catholic. All them Protestant so-called churches and house churches and all that, you lying. No such thing, no American Restoration Movement, Stone Campbell Movement, you lying. The Church of Christ, lying. You lying. And all these man-made religious organizations, you lying. That's all you're doing, lying. The Rastafari is lying. You lying. When it comes to Islam, 
the entire submission to the will of God. We finna go, we finna, we finna, soon, we finna go, I wanna make sure I, we finna, we finna get back on And this ain't definitely, we ain't seeing, oh, there ain't no such thing, no Islam, man. Talking about some entire submission to the will of God and Muslim, one who entirely submits that will to do the will of God. I'm talking about the black Hebrew Israelites, man. Man made religion ones just like them Sikhs and uh the Baha'i. Uh, and all these uh, <coughs> the Mormons and all, all these man made religious ones that there's only one church. You know who told you that the church was wrong? Who told you that? See, you be lying. The problem with the church is the church not wrong, it's you. You wrong, you a sinner. That's what you are, you a sinner. You sinful. You commit sin. No wrong with the church. The church was persecuted. The church is being persecuted. The church been persecuted. The church being persecuted. And, and how is that? Sin. You're a sinner and you're sinful. such thing a blood gang or crib gang in Chicago or no. Ain't no such thing no in the history of Chicago talking some blood stone limestone in the history of Chicago. That's really why I keep repeating over and over again. Retaliate. Retaliate on that so called blood gang and crib gang. Retaliate. There's no such thing as a blood stone or limestone in the history of Chicago. Retaliate. Retaliate. Don't accept, don't approve, and don't allow. Retaliate. See, like I said, like I've been saying over and over, keep on saying, get them AK-47, get them automatic rifles to Chicago, Illinois. Because the East Coast bitch, that East Coast bitch, got the nerve to think you're going to sit your ass up in Chicago, Illinois. Well, that's a lie. Just like all the mother lies, you be telling that's a lie.
like I've been saying, there ain't no, <clears throat> ain't no such, there ain't no blood gang, no crib gang in Chicago, Illinois. No such thing. Ain't no such thing, ain't no bloodstone, no limestone in Chicago, Illinois, or in the state of Illinois, period. No such thing. No such thing. Soon we get through with this right here, with the uh, video right here, we're finna get to this Bible, and we're gonna expose this so-called Muslim and this Islam anti-submission to the will of God and this Muslim, talking about some uh, one who wanna try to submit their will to do the will of God and all that, and, and, and this so-called Black Hebrew Israelite and all that. Some man-made religious organization, they made it up. Some man. Some man made junk. It's some junk. All lies. It's the occult. It's lies. They lie. Islam is the occult. All them Jew and, and black Hebrew Israelite is the occult. The Baha'i, the occult. The Sikhs, the occult. It's the occult. All that Saul from Tarsus, the self-proclaimed Apostle Paul, and our cultists. That's why all them pirates and, and all that gang and mob, being honest, truthful. You can't never say it's not the occult. That's all it is. Because it's not the church. It's not the church.
like a <clears throat> like a man saying about that so-called devil worship. There's no such thing as worshiping the devil. No such thing. There's no such thing as worshiping the devil. You horse playing. You horse playing. There's no such thing as worshiping the devil. Nowhere in the Old Testament. Nowhere in the New Testament. God, there's no such thing as what you see. Devil in worship. You can't put them two words together. There's no such thing. Satan and ism. There's no such thing. You lie. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. All that doggone uh, Western esoteric. You just lie. You just lie. That's all you're doing, lying. See, I told you. See, I told you. See, the East Coast bitch. See, I told you. See, you don't come up to Chicago with no horse plan. Because first of all, you ain't got no being to be in Chicago. Just like Jesse Jackson and Louis Farrakhan. You ain't got no being to be in Chicago. Ain't no such thing, no, no Islam, I mean, no Muslim. And I'm talking about, uh, what's the name, being on I me? Mean, you ain't got no being to talk about. No uh, black Hebrew is like it's a lie, man. And talking about some Jason Jackson in Chicago or the North. Talking about he a, he a Baptist, he a Christian. You ain't got no being to be in Chicago. None whatsoever. You ain't got no being to be in Chicago. There ain't no such thing as no Baptist church. No such thing as being a Christian. You're a lie. You a liar. You and all them Protestants, just like the Catholic line, and all them particular church line. Louis Farrakhan in Chicago. You ain't got no being to be in Chicago. You a liar. You a liar. No such thing, no Islam. No such thing, being no Muslim. You a liar. No such thing.
No such <coughs> no such thing as a blood gang or a crib gang in Chicago or the North. No such thing as a bloodstone limestone in the history of Chicago. Nowhere. Nowhere in the history of Chicago. Nowhere. Retaliate on the so called blood gang and the crib gang. The so called bloodstone line. Retaliate. Retaliate. Get them AK 47, get them automatic rifles to Chicago and the state of Illinois. Get them automatic rifles up there to Chicago and North. The bloodhounds gonna find you. The bloodhounds gonna find you. So called uh, East Coast bitches gonna find you. You thought you were going to get away with horse playing. Talking about some damn devil worship. Think you're getting away with playing for other people. Well, okay. Get them bloodhounds. And them bloodhounds going to find you. Trying to hide. Well, they want to find you. You won't try that no more. I said, get ready to go to the Bible and get the map. This is the Afro-Asiatic language distribution map. This is the Afro-Asiatic. This is another Afro-Asiatic language distribution map.
this a nylo saharan this language distribution map. Nylo saharan Another Nilo Saharan language distribution map. The Niger Congo language distribution map, land Niger Congo. Another Knights of Congo language distribution map. This is the Albanian map, language map. Now these are the Baltic languages. <coughs> the Greek map, Greek language. Now these are the Slavic languages.
going to go to the Bible and we're going to uh, continue to uh, expose all these man-made religious organizations, the Catholic Church and all their particular churches, all these Protestant churches, all this uh, American Restoration Movement, Stone Camel Movement. It's all lies. It's the occult, the occult so-called devil worship. And there's no such thing as devil and worship. No such thing as Satanism. It's all lies. All lies. All lies. Man-made religion or Rastafarian. Uh, 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 that black Hebrew Israelite stuff. Jew. Man-made religious organization. The Sikhs. The Baha'i. And all the rest of them. Man-made religious organization. They lie. The Mormons. They lie. There's only one church. Only one church. Only one. That church is right. That church right. Man wrong. So what we gonna do now? We gonna, we gonna there's no such thing devil worship saying that let's go to the old testament. To the book of Genesis. We're going to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 15 the book of Genesis chapter 15 okay we want we want we want to make sure everybody is uh my ink pen there
we're going to go one by one. Now, in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, in the book of Genesis, chapter 15, it mentions these people in the, in the Old Testament. And uh, I said, let's they, start out reading it, uh, verse 16. We're going to start out reading it, verse 16. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 15. We're going to start reading it, verse 16. It said, but in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, unto, the, unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, and the Kenizzites, and the Cabinites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Rephaims, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Gergesites, and the Jebusites. Now let's go one by one. The Amorites. See all that stuff talking about some anti submission to the will of God. And talking about, uh, talking about you a Muslim one who anti submission will to the will of God. But see, that's where it came from. It came from the ancient people. So let's go online. Semitic speaking people from Syria who also occupy large, part, large part, parts of southern Mesopotamia from the 21st century BC to the end of the 17th century BC where they established several prominent city states in existing locations, notably Babylon, which was raised from a small town to an independent state in a major city. Okay, well, we're gonna stop right there. But as you can see, the Amorites are Semitic people and the Semites. Were Afro Asiatic. I would give it now the Egyptian. Egyptians are the people inhabiting the country of Egypt. The Egyptian identity is closely tied to geography. The population concentrated in the lower Nile Valley, a small strip of cultivatable land stretched from the first cataract to the Mediterranean and enclosed by desert both to the east and to the west. Okay, let me scroll down. the Egyptian people are Afro-Asiatic. They're Afro-Asiatic. And so that's, that's the point we want to make. The Egyptian people are Afro-Asiatic.
Now, the Kenites. Now, the Kenite, according to the Hebrew Bible, the Kenites, Hebrew but not worry, nomadic tribe in the ancient Levant. The Kenites were coppersmiths and metalworks. They played an important role in the history of ancient Israel. One of the most recognized Kenites is Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, who was a shepherd and a priest in the land of Midian. And uh, Judges 1.16 said that Moses had a father-in-law who was a Kenite. But it's not clear from the passage if this refers to Jethro. Certain groups of Kenites settled among the Israelite population, including the descendants of Moses' brother-in-law. Although the Kenites, the Kenites descended from Rechab, maintained a distinct nomadic lifestyle for some time. Kenite is a rendition of Hebrew. According to Genesis, the name is derived from the name Cain. The name Kenite or Ken is identical to the Aramaic word meaning a smith. Which in this turn is a cognate of Hebrew cane, a cane with the meaning a lance. According to the Kenai hypothesis, Yahweh was historically a Median deity, and associated with Moses father in law with Median reflects the historical adoption of the Midianite cult by the Hebrews. Moses apparently identified Jethro's concept of God, Yahweh, with the Israelites' God, as Shadeh. The Kenizites. See, and see, the important point, it never said that the Kenites were Afro Asiatic. See, the Kenites were just like the Perizzites, some ancient people. Now, we're going to go to the Kenizites. The Kenizzite was a tribe referred to in the covenant God made with Abraham. Genesis um, 15, 19. They are not mentioned among the other inhabitants of Canaan. In Exodus 3, 8, in Joshua 3, 10. And probably inhabited some part of Arabia in the confines of Syria. In Numbers 32, 12, Jufane, father of the Israelite leader Caleb, it's called a Kenizzite.
So, um, now, the Kenizites, the Kenizites were Hebrew people. Possibly uh, Edomite, a descendant of the Edom. So, Afro Asiatic. Now, let's go to the uh, Cabanites. says here the Cabanites was according to the Hebrew Bible a tribe mentioned as inhabiting the land promised by God in the covenant of Abraham in Genesis 15 19 the tribe's identity is unknown according to the Eastern Bible the Cabanites inhabited the northeastern part of Palestine is supposed that they are identical to the children of Egypt which inhabited the land between Palestine and the Euphrates So that's one of the uh, people that's mentioned in the Old Testament. You really don't have no uh, history on them. On the Cadmonites. Now let's go to the Hittites. said the Hittites were an Anatolian people who played an important role in the establishing the empire centered on Hattusa in north central Anatolia around 1600 BC. This empire reached its height during the mid 14th century BC under Septuagint. When they come to the area, they include most of Anatolia's weather part of the northern Levant and upper Mesopotamia. The Hittite language was a distinct member of the Anatolian branch of the Indo-European language family and along with the related Luwian language is the oldest historically attested Indo-European language referred to by its speakers as necessarily in the language of Nisa. So there again, the Hittites were Indo-European. The Hittite was not Afro-Asian. The Hittite was Indo-European. Now, the Perizzite. are a group of people mentioned many times in the Bible as having lived in Canaan before the arrival of the, of the Israelites. The name may be related to a Hebrew term meaning rural person. Now, say biblical mentions of Perizzite extended from the time of Abraham to the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. According to, uh, let me see, Ezra refers to, refers to the Perizzite does not apply. Any group still known as Perizzite existed in the land of Ezra. Time it is stated to be understood as a literary, literary reference by Ezra to passages such as uh, doing uh, oh, 
Nebuchadnezzar and still be understood as a literary reference by Ezra to pass such as Exodus 34, 11, 16, and Deuteronomy 7, 1, 5, which prohibited intermarriage with a variety of non Israelite peoples, including Perizzites, among others. The time during which Perizzites were most encountered with the Israelites seemed to be the time of Joshua until the early period of the judge. Okay, let me see here. It says here, uh, according to Trevor Bryce, the Perizzites cannot be linked to any peoples or lands known from extra biblical sources. It is possible that their name had a general diaphragm that is, it either referred to those who lived in villages as opposed to being nomadic, or referred to those who or were unknown, the, or Perizzites may refer to it in an amalgamation of several peoples. It says here the view was formerly here that the Perizzi were a prehistoric tribe which became assimilated to the Canaanites when the Canaanites invaded came, but the Perizzites are not mentioned in the genealogy. More recent commentators are of the opinion that the names Perizzi and the Perizzi are identical and that the Bible has included under the name Perizzi all stopped dwelling in unwalled towns. So as you can see, the Perizzites were not really considered to be a uh, Afro-Asiatic people. Now, uh, Rephaims. R-E-P-H-A-I-M with the S on the end or Riphite in the Hebrew Bible as well as known Jewish ancient text from the reading the Northwest Semitic term Riphite and Riphaim refers either to a people group of greater than average height and stature possibly giants or to dead ancestors who are residents of the underworld. So the Rephaites are also mentioned in uh okay uh in the Hebrew Bible Rephaites or Rephaim can describe an ancient race of giants in Iron Age Israel or a place of where these individuals are thought to have lived according to Genesis 14 5 
King Shirt of Lamel and his ally attacked and defeated the Rephites and Extra Rock Carnet. Rephites are also mentioned in all these other places. Okay, let me, let me move down. It says in the biblical narrative, the Israelites were instructed to exterminate the previous inhabitants of the promised land, Canaan, which include various named peoples, including some usually, unusually tall, large, and thin. Several passages in the book of Joshua and also Deuteronomy 3.11 suggest that Og, the king of Bashan, was one of the last survivors. was one of the last survivors of the Riffium and that his being was nine cubits long and ordinary cubits. And ordinary cubits is the length of a man's forearm according to the new American standard Bible or approximately 18 inches, which differs from a royal cubit that makes the bed over 13 feet, even longer if the cubit was based on a giant's forearm and act. See the area of Moab and Or at Ar. Before the time Moab was also considered the land of the Rephiates. Notice that the Ammonites called the Rephiates Zamzumi in Deuteronomy 2 11. The Moabites referred to them as the Enoch. see again the Riffiums are not considered to be uh, Afro-Asiatic okay now the Canaanites One of those group of people, the Ammonites, like the land of Am Ammon, they were Semitic people. They were a Semitic people. Now let's go to the Canaanites. Semitic was a Semitic people speaking, reading, and civilized. So, as you can see. Now let me say this. When it comes to the Canaanite languages, uh, now when it comes 
to the people. Now it says, you know, now when it comes to the people, they were uh, Phoenicians, Philistines, and Israelites, Moab, Ammon, Tajikar, Geshur, and Edom. The Canaanite languages, Phoenician, Hebrew, Ammonite, Moabite, and Edomite. All right, let's, let's move down to the Gergesites. That said, the Gergesites were descendants of Canaan. And according to the uh, Genesis 10 16, one of them, and also the inhabitants of the land of Canaan, they are listed along with other Canaanite tribes, inhabiting the whole land according to some, such as the Rish Rashi. So they were Afro Asiatic, the Gergesites. Afro Asiatic. Now, the Jebusites. Jebusites, according to the books of Joshua and Samuel from the Hebrew Bible, a Canaanite tribe then inhabited Jerusalem prior to the conquest inhabited by Joshua. Now, Jebusites are considered to be a Canaanite tribe, so they Afro Asiatic. Now, uh, the Hittites. Hittites were one group of descendants of Canaan, son of Ham, according to the Table of Nations. In Genesis 10, a variety of proposals have been made by Bunyan and referencing the Bible to Hittites in the land of Canaan. So, there are another Canaanite, the Philistines.
Now the Philistines were an ancient people who lived on the south coast of Cana between the 12th century BC and 604 BC when they were exiled to Mesopotamia by King Nebuchadnezzar and said they are known for their biblical conflict with the Israelites. The primary source of information by the Philistines, the Hebrew Bible, but they are first test during the release at the Temple of Ramses the third Middle Hebrew where they are called Philistines. Okay, let me see Now, <clears throat> Philistine is an Indo-European language. It said the Philistine language is the extinct language of the Philistine spoken and rather inscribed along the coastal strip of southwestern Canaan. Very little is known about the language in which a handful of words survive as cultural long words in Hebrew are described specific Philistine institutions. Said uh native to Philistines, if Mr. Philistine is extinct, uh name said the BC language family, Indo European. So the Philistine Indo European. They were a member of a West Semitic people who lived in the highlands east of the Dead Sea. So in other words, they were Afro-Asiatic. The Midianites.
So let's make sure we don't forget who the Midianites were. According to the book of Genesis, the Midianites were the descendants of Midian, who was a son of Abraham and his wife, Keturah. Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shuay. So as you can see, why was this important to do? Well, in order for you to make all these claims about Islam, and then when you put that phrase, uh, entire submission to the will of God, I mean, that's a lot of words then to say Islam and Muslim one more time submit that will to God. And so, that's the reason why it was so important to do that. So, all these people, some of these people are not the same people. But see, God told Abraham he was going to possess the land of Canaan because he believed in the Lord. These other people, some were Aphrasian, some were not like the Perizzites and the Camonites. Uh, possibly, uh, let me, let me, uh, the Rephaims, uh, the Philistines, uh, they were not afro asiatic The Hittites and the Philistines, they ain't no European. The Rephaims, they were not. And the Perizzites, they are ancient people. Uh, the Camonites, they ancient people. You can't see they not Afro Asian. But see, God said destroy these people. To see these people were inter uh interrelated, you know, they they they, they were living around each other, you know, in the land of Canaan. And they had this 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 way of life that included some type of uh expression toward this supreme being but all these people are not the, you know the same people see it's important to point this out I'm talking about some black Hebrew is like talking about the Jews see when you point these things out it's important it's important to point these things out See, when you lie, that's what you be doing, you be lying. That's what the black Hebrew Israelite be doing, be lying. The Rastafarian, you be lying. All this stuff about Islam, 
You lying. You all that stuff about mother. You lying. Stop talking about some Christian. You, I know you lying. You lying. There's no such thing. There's no such thing being a Christian. There's no such thing. And so, uh, we're going to come back on my next video and we're going to pick back up on these things. But see, as you can see, see, it's important to, to look these people up in the Old Testament. When you hear somebody say Islam and Muslim, you hear somebody say Jew, Judaism. See, you be lying. Now, like I 
I see it. Uh, see, it's important that you point these things out. And you see, when you read the Old Testament, when Moses was talking to Pharaoh and saying that he speak, you understand? And, and, and God told the children to possess the land. And these people who didn't came. All these people were not Afro-Asian yet. And then you speaking to these people about God. And see, oh. Go to some of these verses. Let's see what the case is. Here we go. For example, in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, we're going to start our reading. says here in verse 23 uh, Exodus 23 verse 23 for my angels shall go before thee and bring thee in, in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites the Hittites and the Jebusites and I will cut them off thou shalt not bow down to their gods nor serve them nor do after their works but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and ye shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take the sickness 
away from the midst of evil. See, you see, this is the point that is being made. The Perizzites is not Afro Asiatic. The Hittites is an Indo European. So when you hear, when you see in the Bible, God tell you, don't serve their gods. Don't serve their gods. Everybody not the same. They don't speak the same language. But for some apparent reason, God telling the children of Israel, go possess this land of Canaan. Then you got all these different people living in the land of Canaan and God telling you don't serve their gods. Well these people had gods and they had these these expressions to their gods. That's where Israel came from. See, that's where entire submission to the will of God came from. One who is Muslim, one who is trying to submit their will do the will of God. That's where Jew came from and Jew is Indo-European that's where it came from see that's where the history, the etymology that's where all that stuff came from tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to keep recording let's see how I start recording at 3 so, then I have another two hours. So, first part of my video is going to be two hours. So, I got uh, about 15 more minutes, and it'll be uh, two hours. Let me see what time it is. Okay. Let's be after five. What I'm doing, just on go in. Then I'm gonna do my uh, uh, Facebook Live. And so, what I'm doing on Facebook Live is that uh, since I did a lot of a lot of majority of some of my biblical uh, things when I started my video, uh, I wanted to go into the history, you know, the history of Chicago. So, what I'm gonna do. Is, uh, I'm gonna do it on my Facebook Live. I'm doing it on my Facebook Live. Why? I'm, I'm gonna see if I can do. Uh, Cause let me see. I gotta do my uh, my uh, Instagram. I'm gonna do my Instagram. Then I to do my Instagram. Then I'm gonna do my Facebook Live. Cause I know I ain't gonna have time to do. Cause I spend a lot of time, which was important. See, this is a very, very good. See, the Rastafarians don't have nothing to talk about. Because you and me know that where it came, that Rastafarian, that's the, talking about the uh, last emperor of Ethiopia. And these people down in Jamaica, when Rastafari, Rastafari went on vacation from Ethiopia. And this was during the 1960s. And a lot of, you know, then the people were looking for some type of uh, hero during that period of time because the African peoples had been oppressed and possibly being oppressed. And so some dark skinned Afro Asiatic person, because you know the Ethiopian people are Afro Asiatic. But see, the people in Jamaica are Niger Congo. But being oppressed, not being taught the traditions of the Niger Congo people. You would just take anybody that was dark skin. You know, as some type of leader. So then you walk around here talking about some Rastafari. There's no such thing as a Rastafari. There's no such thing. There's no such you know, concept as a Rasta fire in, you know, expression of of uh, love for God. There's no such thing. 
That's a lie. This dog caught. It's a lie. And so, like I said, we're reading over here in uh, the book of Exodus, that was 23, uh, chapter 23. We started reading in verse 23, 23 and uh, 24. Let me go to another one. Uh, Exodus 30. Now, let me, let me, let me read, uh, here, where we at? Okay, here we go. We're in Exodus, we're in the book of Exodus. Chapter 34, we're in the book of Exodus, chapter 34. And it says here, in the book of, book of Exodus, chapter 34. Verse stop, we're gonna start reading in verse number eleven. It said, Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite. The Hittite is Indo European. And the Perizzite. The Perizzite is not Indo European. And the Perizzite is not Afro Asiatic. The Perizzite is an ancient people. And the Hittite and the Jebusite, he said, Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whether thou, thou goest. Lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, when ye shall destroy their altars. Destroy their altars. Break their images and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other God. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Lest thou make a covenant with the heavens of the land, and they go horn after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go horn after their gods, and make thy sons go horn after their gods and thou shalt make thee no molten gods so there you can see see God no see this stuff you be talking about uh, Christianity 
Judaism, Islam, is the occult. Let me turn over to the book of Leviticus. It says here now we over here in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 verse 21 and and it said and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech neither shalt thou profane the name of the of thy God I am the Lord Now here we are in the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 4. It says, Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourself molten gods, and the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 20. And then we go over here to the book of Numbers.
Now I'm going to read this uh, passage. And then I'm going uh, to cut this video off. And it says here in the book of Numbers chapter 25. Start reading verse no more. And Israel bowed and shit them. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of their gods. And the people did eat and bow down to their God. And Israel joined themselves unto Baal, Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up for the, up before the Lord against the sun. That the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one of his men that were joined at the Baal Pill. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren mid and night his woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of the congregation of the children who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle. And the and when Pinehas, the son of Elazar, the son of Aaron, the priest saw, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Pentecost, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, have turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake and money, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my just work. Wherefore say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. And he shall have it and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianite woman, was Zimri, the son of Salem, a prince of a chief, house among the Simeonites. And the name of the Midianite woman, they were slain with Kazba, the daughter of Zur. He was head over the people in the end of the chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wives, with their wives wherewith they have. Beguile you in a, in a matter of pale, in a matter of Kazba, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for pain or sake. So let me uh, get ready to end this video. Then I'm going to start part two. So this is going to be part one. And it's going to be dated uh, November the 29th, 2019, part one. And then I'm going to start part two.